Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, the Rust Week talks are out, including some from Alice of Bevy fame and Yoss of Polders. There are a number of Bevy Jam entries that could have been showcases this week, but I've decided to not include them to avoid impacting voting during the voting period, which is your reminder to go vote if you participated. There's also some really exciting work on ray traced lighting, a new observers working group, and in the wider community, a prototype of a Hanabi particle editor. So let's start off with Solari. Solari is the name given to Bevy's ray traced lighting effort, which has seen two plugins merge in 19058. That includes the ray tracing scene plugin, which includes acceleration structures, geometry, and texture binding and sampling functions, as well as the path tracing plugin, which is a non real time path tracer intended to serve as a test bed and reference implementation. It's very notable that this is early work. The merged work is not something that you can currently drop into a game. However, you can run the Solari example to see the reference path tracer in action if you have a suitable GPU. And with the Observer's Overhaul Working Group in action, 19596 has renamed Trigger to On, moving the common On Event prefix off of the event, improving ergonomics. These improved ergonomics become even more apparent when considering future proposals, such as multi-event observers which you would otherwise see scattered with on prefixes for all of the events. And after this PR, you will not. Observers also got a really nice documentation refresh in 19590, and the entity placeholder, if you've ever encountered that, was removed in 19440, turning trigger targets for turn value into an option entity. And headless widgets are a fairly common feature of modern UI frameworks, bundling all of the functionality you'd want without the visuals, which can make it easier to build accessible functional UI. 19366 introduces the first widget, the core button. And there's been talk about a 3D transform, a 2D transform. This, that is 16615, makes a distinction between transform for UI work with the new UI transform and UI global transform. While 19194 improves Bevy's double precision story, making a few necessary changes to Bevy math so that a Bevy D math, which supports double precision, can exist. And that brings us into the showcases this week with this Mobius shader inspired by a YouTube video. There are currently no plans to open source the implementation at this time, but if you're interested, you can go watch the video and implement it yourself. And Touch Designer is a creative technology platform and rendering editor that is used to power large scale interactive installations. In the video here, the result of a render in Touch Designer is passed into a node running Bevy's post-processing chromatic aberration effect, which is modulated by another full LUT texture generated by Touch Designer. This is all done using CUDA and Vulkan Interop via WGPU HAL with all textures kept on device. And then we've got a couple of images from a work in progress 3D space simulation. It's multiplayer and set in a simulated galaxy with physics based on real Newtonian mechanics. The focus of the game is PVP with the goal of expanding your empire with colonies. The game itself is built on top of Lightyear for multiplayer networking and big space. And Bunget was made using Bevy for the TGC game jam a gameplay preview, which you can see here, is available over on YouTube, and you can play the actual game over on itch.io. And this Dark Cave voxel demo has a render distance of 16, meaning a 33 by 33 chunk grid, where each chunk is 32 by 64 by 32 blocks. So approximately the equivalent of Minecraft's 32 render distance. And here we have some more progress on this Ray Marcher project. The plan is to open source the code after it's finished. And the pixelation effect here, I believe, is an intentional effect. Next up, we've got train experiments, which is an experiment in trains moving from place to place, as you can see on the path. And next up, we've got some great looking images from DAW, which is a flight sim. Recent changes to this flight sim include upgrading to Bevy's atmospherics, as well as the rendering of rear view mirrors. And for something a bit more down to earth, this is a mouse overlay implemented as a Bevy application with a full screen transparent window that doesn't capture mouse hits, followed by some working floor direct followed by some working floor detection for this character controller. More work to come on this one. And here we have a prototype editor for Hanabi particle assets. The editor itself is built with Bevy as the viewer and GPUI for the editor. This looks very exciting, and I believe the author is planning on open sourcing it. Although it currently only works on 2D particle effects, it could be extended to work with 3D. And it's a quick one for the crate section this week with Bevy simple screen boxing. Bevy Simple Screen Boxing is a plugin that aims to make pillar boxing or letter boxing easy to use. Add the camera boxing plugin and then the camera box component on any cameras you want to have boxing on. And with that, don't forget that the talks from Rust Week from Yoss on the Bevy engine in action, covering Dionysian Rust, and Alice covering Bevy's immutable components, are both up on YouTube with links on the site, as well as, of course, all of the other Rust Week talks. If you want to get involved, go check out the open pull request this week. 
anybody can drop a review. So even if all you do is run the PR and leave a comment saying it worked for you, it's a great way to start getting involved in the Bevy project. And that's it for this week. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your week.